Let me jump in there. Uh, it's funny because the other day when Matt's uh, video came out on that, I was talking with a colleague in uh, Europe and, and we started discussing the effects that that can have for copywriters because focusing on the conversational way in which people will ask their iPhone for information gives us an opportunity to really nail and as, as Google is getting better and then I would have to assume that Bing is, is working in the same direction uh, working, getting better at NLP, natural language processing, eventually working their way towards the uh, artificial intelligence, you know, so semantic ability. This not only gives us the ability to be more natural in our writing, which can be a lot more engaging for the reader, but it also gives us the ability to tell the engine a lot more about what we're talking about. And I think the copywriters and content strategists that jump on that bandwagon early are going to get a big leg up. So, so what I'm hearing is is sharpen your storytelling um, uh, capabilities, uh, regardless of what the topic or the niche. You have to capture that audience, whether you're doing it with psychology 101, whether you're doing it with benefits, features, obviously. Um, you know, uh, there's different um, variations to, to um, you know, language. Uh, so, so know your market. Know, know who they are and, and um, go, go that route. Um, now, in regards to uh, um, doing international uh, uh, content marketing, do you guys advise that? Uh, and, and this is just something that I personally want to know how everybody uh, does this. But do you try to market to different countries? And if you do, uh, do you allow the Google translation to 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 speak to that market, or do you take your time and 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 get things translated, or advise your clients, or or uh, just curious? Melissa, Jennifer, you guys want to. Jennifer, do you want to... Yeah, um, I'll just quickly say that I um, don't, for my clients actually, haven't had the opportunity to do a lot of international stuff. Um, that's an area that I'm, I'm definitely really interested in getting to play with a little bit more. In terms of my own marketing and myself, um, I've done a little bit international, but English speaking international, you know, Australia, New Zealand, England, that kind of thing. So I'm probably not the best resource here, but actively listening to hear what Melissa might have to say. Well, I'm not that far off from Jennifer. I let Google, um, I, I, in the past, I had done sites for other countries, um, but I don't think that's really necessary anymore. However, when we create content, we use terminology that those countries would use versus what Americans would use, like holiday versus vacation. You know what I mean? So we change it up so that when it is translated, um, it makes sense. <laughs> no problem. But that's really the extent. I have not done a lot of international SEO at this point. And I don't think I really want to, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, no, I mean, the reason I ask is because, you know, people people have, have come to us and asked, you know, should I, uh, you know, um, 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 try to get business in France or uh, South America or, um, you know, and if, and if I should, do I need to hire a company that's local to, to that area? Um, you know, regardless of whether it's e-commerce, uh, you know, we've, as a matter of fact, Doc and I had had worked on a on a on a site a while ago, where we took the complete English site and translated it to Spanish because it made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does. So I was just you know wanting to know what what you ladies thought about um, about that. Um, Doc, do you have some questions? Because I have a couple more, but. I feel like I'm railroading this uh, this uh, hangout. Well, that's because you're supposed to. It's your, it's your turn. I railroaded the last one. Uh, no, you know, as, as far as the international side, I uh, I started out doing predominantly English speaking as well. 
uh, I found a, a, a block wall, just a brick wall here in uh, Mexico. The SEO is not even yet widely accepted as a uh, beneficial thing to do. So I started working down in South America a little bit, but I started out in, in Australia, UK, English speaking Canada and US. And until I started working uh, quite a lot with level 343, I didn't get too much into the European and uh, non Latin America. And I, I see there's just a tremendous amount of potential there, uh, provided you do it correctly. As long as you right. get into the, the local mindset and. and you can't use Google Translate. You know that's just not going to. Yeah, no, because regardless of whether you're in South America or Germany or or frickin', uh, you know Algeria, uh, you you have to focus on that country and and the way they speak, the way they write, um, the way they generate the content and share it. Um, so so yeah, completely different beast. Uh, but. Um, Anyway, so so I'm not sure how long we've been been chatting for, but um, I think I've I've gotten most of my questions out of the way. I did want to talk about some measuring tools if if we have time, but I'm not sure, Doc. Where where are we? Well, we had a little hiccup there at the beginning. I think we're since we came back on, we're about 36 minutes in. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, then let me bang out my questions. Um, so, because <laughs> we want to do at least 40 to 45 minutes. So, all right. Case studies. Um, can either one of you tell me, um, without getting into too much detail, uh, what has been uh, a, a successful content campaign that, that, that you, you, you were in charge of or that you were part of, and what was the aha moment? when you realized, you know, oh, this is working, or whoops, you know, let, let me turn around and, and, and do something to make it work, whether it's A-B testing, whether it's whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, Jennifer, do you want to go first, or, or Melissa? I'll go first. Okay. Um, so, first of all, um, it, always testing. I, I'm just a huge fan of testing. So A-B split testing is just always happening. Um, play with multivariate testing when I need to speed things up a little bit. So that's always happening. For me, one of the big aha moments was a, con a client was putting a lot of content out there in a lot of different places, doing the right things um, under my guidance. Um, the numbers were there in terms of the audience that we were reaching, but the response was not there, and it was disappointing. Um, they were producing the content, and I was just sort of guiding and advising, and all of a sudden it struck me um, less is more sometimes and I think one of the biggest tools that people don't use in producing content is editing, is cutting things out. When you've produced a piece of content, go back and review it. Where have you over talked? Where have you over explained? Where have you overused jargon? What can you cut back? How can you fine tune it? When we cleaned it up, when we put, you know, still offering value, still making sure that we're giving a here's a takeaway, here's a step A, B, C, do that, um, we instantly got a better response. I don't know if we were over talking and people were drowning, you know, just tuning us yeah, out. Yeah, sometimes it does happen. I've, I've heard that and I've seen it where you're just giving way too much and, and you do, you, you drown your audience. There's been studies where they've shown, uh, you know, this particular, uh, I forget who it was, uh, you know, up their blogging and sure they got more traffic but their conversions stayed the same. Uh, you know, even though they were just, you know, just throwing that content out there and it was great and it was wonderful but a lot of it uh, was missed because it was too much. Um, so, so there is definitely a balance. While we wait for her to do that, if I could jump in with one other um, sure. tip. Um, one of the things that we also played with, it goes along the line with, of A-B um, split testing, is when you create content and you're putting a, um, you're putting a bio out there and you've got the ability to 
a link to a different page on your site, I think most people's instinct is to drive them to the home page because they feel like the home page best represents you know, their overall summary of what they do. So one tool that's been effective for us is to create different landing pages for different sources and include a link to that landing page in the bio and then take it a step further and split test that landing page and see what gets you a better response. Again, it's a, it's a simple, once you say it, it's an obvious no-brainer, but I think a lot of people aren't doing it because I'm still seeing tons of links to home pages. Let me just interrupt because I saw this conversation just the other day. Um, how are you tracking those? Are you setting them up as events in the Google Analytics uh, mm -hmm. and then tracking that particular event and then just, you know, setting up its own dashboard? Or what's, I mean, which, which way are you guys doing it? Yeah, we have done some of that, some of events, and we've done some when a client, you know, a client will just come to us and they, in, in a great case where they've already got landing pages in place and they've already got stuff set up and they're running it just through their content experiments in Google, you know, we can just track everything through there um, and get all the data that we need. So it's... I'm not a big, I, I'm good at analyzing data, but I'm not an expert in terms of how it gets set up in Google Analytics. My tech team gets it all set up for me, and then I just dive into the data. Um, so I don't actually know the details of the setup, um, but I know that we're able to get great data that kind of tracks it through the whole process, where they came in, which pages got the best response. You know, we look at the in-page analytics and see which links on the page got the activity and the clicks, so we're really digging into a lot of data. This might be slightly different than what you're looking for, but okay. um, <laughs> we created content for a client and we planned it out really, really well, and it worked and it was actually drawing in a lot of local clientele but what we did not anticipate was that they did not have the infrastructure in place to handle the increase in calls and work mm -hmm. okay so they stopped I mean people were calling people wanted the services but they weren't calling them back or emailing they did not have enough people to handle it so then wow. bad reviews start showing up online they don't return phone calls you see what I mean? Right. So it was like, oh, <laughs> well, before we do this and make it really, really work for the client, we need to make sure the client knows what to expect as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that they even have the bandwidth. I mean, something as yeah. simple as that, sure. Right. Well, I, I experienced the same thing with Melissa with a client that uh, told me that his customer service department was ready and able to jump on it. We launched a new campaign. I found out that his customer service department was the executive assistant slash bookkeeper slash <laughs> customer service department who, who typically dedicated about 20 minutes per day to doing a couple of tweets. Oh, okay, great. Wow. And yeah. suddenly the same thing. They started getting nasty. And this was a, in a niche that uh, is, is chuck full of trolls anyway. And they just started getting lambasted right and left with negative reviews because they're, you know, a bullshit campaign. Nobody's responding. Can't get a call back. Emailed four times the last week, and and it was true. Nobody was getting a response. Yeah. And it was so it was embarrassing for all of us. And it, it was a question I should have asked. A lesson learned, you know. But uh, I should have known to ask that question early on. And that can be <laughs> that was tough to recover from. Yeah. Well, and I assumed they wanted the increase in work. I mean, what were they paying me for? But they're like, well, we didn't want to work 40 or 50 hours a week. Well, <laughs> bingo. You know what? That's, that's a great. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how everybody does their discovery when they first take on a client. Um, you know, we, we have an 11 page discovery, you know, that we ask. And, and that's a great question to, to include. Um, thanks for that tip. Um, because we have run into that problem, um, but it wasn't something that we were, you know, ready or knew how to address. Um, um, or the other thing too is is when you do work on a client site and you you you're ready to transfer it to their server. Guess what? They have X Y Z missing, or they can't. Uh, you know, their server doesn't hold a database, or their server isn't you know compatible with uh, you know whatever they're using. Um, so those are uh, real important, uh, you know, things that are right under your nose that, that uh, a lot of people just, you know, take for granted. Um, Doc, do you want to wrap it up or um, should I? 
Well, I don't know what kind of wrap up you're looking for, other than the fact that uh, I'm really glad we got these these uh, two very accomplished professionals to join us today and share some wisdom. I hope that uh, somebody gets some benefit out of it because there's a lot to be to be played with, and and, and we haven't still evolved on a broad scale in terms of content domination. There is so much more potential. And with the changes that we're going through every day, uh, the, the, the potential is increasing exponentially. You know, I, I get excited about the, uh, and, I, and I've been using NLP geared content generation for some time now, and I'm seeing results out of it. And I'm excited about the, the potential in the future because it lets you write to the reader and almost you know, almost, not entirely, forget about the search engine. Instead of, you know, the, the, the grave error we see all too often, people writing strictly to the search engine and the heck with the reader. So, right. you know, it, it's going to, to weed out more of the low-quality content, and it's going to open up a lot of possibilities to people that are on the cutting edge. Right. So, Melissa, Jennifer, uh, thank you. It's been enjoyable and informative. And I got some takeaways for, for my own sheath, so <laughs> look forward to uh, putting them to use. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, ladies. Um, just to wrap it up uh, for uh, the listeners, readers, watchers, um, content domination at the end of the day um, is going to give you uh, it's going to give you an increase in authority. Uh, it's going to give you the PR, again, depending on what you use, whether it's video, whether it's content, whether it's a mix of everything. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, eventually give you a rise in ranks because, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. Um, but keep it clean, keep it relevant, and um, I guess that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us, and um, it's a wrap.